Hello, hello. My name is Rebecca, and I lead the system UI team in Android Developer Relations Engineering. So, users expect their apps to just work. But if you think a premium experience is still a nice to have, then I'm here to say that these days, it's what users expect. They want their apps to be modern and elegant, personal and accessible. So let's talk about how the Android platform can take you there. With three recent features that can help your app straight out of the box. First, edge to edge. Achieve a premium layout, an immersive experience, and scale to foldables and tablets. Second, predictive back. Gesture navigation is gaining traction year on year. So in Android 13, we've released some major improvements to the back gesture. It's predictive, informative, and delightful. Third, dynamic color. Designing an accessible color system is essential for any modern app. But you don't need to start from scratch. We've got you covered. So let's get into it. Building a premium layout with edge to edge. So making the navigation bar transparent has been a key piece of feedback from our Android users. In fact, this was the case in Android 13, and in 12, and 11. So from Android 11, the recommendation has been to draw behind the status and navigation bar. And we call this going edge to edge. To avoid overlaps with the system UI, you can use the system bar and system gesture insets provided by the platform window insets or using window insets compact from Android X. Window insets have been around for a while with a revamp of the API in Android 10 and 11. So here's an example of how Google Slides is applied edge to edge, giving that full immersive experience that users love. Note how on scrolling, the contents draws under both bars and how that floating action button stays fixed as you scroll. For Gmail, the design means that they don't draw under the bottom navigation bar, but they can still ensure that the nav bar color matches. So no more black bars. Great. So how can you implement this? There are two places to make this change. First, in your theme. Set the status and navigation bars to be transparent. And yes, you do need to do this for both Compose and Views-based apps. Second, in your activity, call set decor fit system windows to false on window compact. Before Android 13, apps needed to use the system UI visibility API to set a whole bunch of flags to be requested to be laid out full screen. These APIs were deprecated and replaced with this one call. This single argument in set decor fit system windows, system window controls whether or not your layout will fit inside the system windows if true, or draw behind them if false. And to keep the fab pinned as you scroll, using Jetpack Compose with the updated scaffold in Material 3, the insets padding is automatically handled for the fab. So no direct insets code is required unless you want to customize it further using the modifier. This is really nice. As for views-based content, you would need to call window insets for the system and navigation bars and handle that padding yourself. And so, with these changes, your apps can reap the rewards, not only on mobile, but for foldables and tablets too. Second, create a delightful navigation with predictive back. Gesture navigation is a fast, natural, and ergonomic interaction model. And while the back gesture is the single most popular, we see that some result in people leaving the apps by mistake. And we call this falsing. Users tell us that as they navigate the app, they like to have visual clues to indicate where that gesture is going to take them, especially if that is outside of the app. So it's quite possible that falsing has been affecting your end metrics. So in Android 13, we released Predictive Back to help apps feel more elegant and informative and to lend a cohesive feel across all apps. See here on the right, as that user swipes back, they see that sneak peek of the home screen to let them know that they're about to leave. 
And to support this uh, predictive animation, System Back has moved to an ahead of time model. So starting in Android 13, apps need to tell the system in advance if they'll be leaving, if they'll be handling back events. So before the back gesture starts, the system knows whether an application is handling system back or if it should take control and display feed forward hints. So in this back to home example, the system knows ahead of time whether the next back gesture will be popping the in-app back stack or if it will be returning to the launcher, allowing the system to preview the app dismiss and revealing the launcher behind. The cornerstone for predictive back is a new platform API called onback invoked callback. And this interface has one main method, onback invoked. And so this will be called instead of the legacy onback press methods. To register one of these callbacks, you need to call onback invoked dispatcher from an activity or a dialogue. And once you have an instance of the dispatcher, you can register a callback. And We've already updated the Android X library with the on back press callback starting in 1.6. And under the hood, it is still calling those same platform APIs. It's all taken care of. So for Android 13, you can opt in by setting enable on back invoked to true in your manifest. And if you don't have any custom back navigation in your app, then that's all you need to do. If you do, then before you target Android 13, you can test if your app works by setting the same flag. And then once that flag is set, key callback and on back pressed will no longer be called. So let's take a look at an example. So once you upgrade to Android X 1.6 using Jetpack Compose, you can see here in this simple button example that the navigation component and the usages of back handler become instantly compatible with Android 13 while still being backward compatible with previous versions. Use the recommended Android X activity library and its on back press dispatch API to register and unregister callbacks. This is all thanks to the head of time model that Android X library had in its on back press dispatch API. Now let's test. Go to settings, system, developer options, enable predictive back animations, then launch your app to test the back gesture. And coming in Android 14, users will get a similar experience when they swipe within the app, letting users know where back is gonna take them by leveraging default or custom animations. And third, create an accessible color system with dynamic color. So how does your app express your brand? How does it look in different light settings? And does it allow for the user's preference all at the same time? Users like their apps to be accessible and expressive. Developers want their color system to be scalable because handling many color, color systems is getting harder and harder to manage. That's why in Android 12, we released Dynamic Color, the modern color system. Dynamic Color and Material U allow for personalization across the entirety of a user's device and allows for apps to align with their user. So here's how it works. Custom palettes are generated from an individual's wallpaper. And in Android 13, we released color variants, allowing for even more palettes. So let's take a look at some of the underlying principles of dynamic color. Making it accessible. That's the only way to design for everyone, ensuring that the products that you make are inclusive to the widest possible audience. So in this example, two different hues are seen here, orange and green. But when they're grayscaled, we find that there's very little contrast between them. So. You can improve this contrast ratio when grayscaled by updating the chroma and the tone, but still honoring the hues. And this is a core principle in the creation of every dynamic color palette for any given wallpaper. Making it scalable. Design tokens enable flexibility and consistency across a product by allowing engineers to assign an element's color role in a UI rather than a set value. 
And this creates a unified color system and increases that ease of collaboration between designers and engineers as they align on the same color tokens. So let's take a look at some code. So using Compose, create your default light and dark color scheme and leverage those dynamic color tokens. As you can see, there are many and many more than I've listed here. So when creating your theme, you can also add custom color tokens you, you need, like brand colors, or maybe you have protected colors with semantic importance. So for example, in a caller app, you may always want that hang up button to stay red, but you don't mind so much if the chroma or the tone shifts. And then create your app theme. Note that the dynamic color logic here is gated for Android 12. And so what's the result? Meet your users where they are, with dynamic color available across many of our device partners. And the app isn't the only opportunity to connect with your users. The home screen is too. Leverage app widgets and your adaptive icon. And you can check out Marcel's talk later on app widgets. But finally, let's take a look at that one line code change you'll need for themed app icons in Android 13. So two steps. One, import your SVG icon as a vector drawable. And two, add the monochrome tag pointing to that new vector drawable. And that's it. So for more information, check out that Google link here. So to summarize, designing premium apps can sometimes sound daunting and arbitrary, but with edge to edge, predictive back, and dynamic color, you have these features that can help you right out of the box to make your apps modern and elegant and to keep your users happy. Thank you. <laughs>